for all the nice tributes I've already seen all over Facebook and texting and people calling. Oh, you guys mean that so much to us. Um, thank you for the very comforting messages. And um, just thank you for everyone here who sacrificed their time and their money and their time off from work just to be here. Everybody's been staying up so late with us and you guys from start to finish have been such a big help to us. Um, helping, helping ease the pain. Um, just, 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 the, um, just, just the, um, the welcome that we got here when we got to the airport, like the whole church was there to pick us up. I mean, that means so much to me and my family. I mean, you guys are like unbelievable and I love you guys. <coughs> and for those who don't know, my dad started the ministry with these very same people in 1994 and he ended the ministry with the same people. <laughs> three days ago, and I think that that's not an accident. He came back to his first love. He came back to the first church that he started. When I first heard the news, I was in Jacksonville, and my, well, I kept telling me, hey, your brother's trying to call you. And you know, I thought it was just my brother saying, hey man, let's try to buy a property somewhere. <laughs> 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 that's all he talks about now. He's like, hey man, I got this fourplex, man. We can... <laughs> so I was like, man, what's he trying to do? I mean, he's like, that's a... every time he calls me, he's like, man, can we talk about something else? I mean, man, it's just funny. But then all of a sudden, he just goes, man, dad's not breathing. <laughs> My heart dropped to the floor. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I, I like, I didn't know how to react because I was so far away. Oh my goodness, so like, all I could do is just go on Facebook and say, emergency. Yeah. Yeah. What? I was like, I was like, emergency, please pray for me. We need all the prayers in the world. My dad's stopped breathing. You know, the ambulance has got him and he, they're giving him CPR, but he's unresponsive. It was like the deepest pain I've ever, I've ever had to face in my life. Uh, I didn't know how to react. It was like it didn't seem real. I was like, no way. My dad's so healthy. He's always, you know, he's always, he's always just so full of energy and joy. And uh, how in the world did this happen? So you know, we thought it was like a man. Maybe he got a high, uh, hypertension or maybe a stroke. Um, but the craziest thing is, Ryan told me, or Candy told me there's a CT scan and it showed he got in a bad accident. I was like, what? How did this happen? And, um, Ryan showed me pictures and I could not believe it. He fell off a ladder and, um, um, the good thing is the doctor who was speaking to me, the neurologist, he told me on, upon immediate impact, he lost his sense of pain or any kind of sense of suffering. So he knew, he, he gave me that assurance that my dad did not suffer any pain when it happened. <laughs> so that helped me feel a little better. But the, the miracle was somehow, some way, he was able to get out of it, that impact. Because the doctor said most people, if they fall that hard, it's dead on impact, like dead on arrival. Like once that happens, it's over. But for some miracle from God, he was able to find the, the strength to uh, get up. <laughs> and we traced it. I went to me and my family went to the spot and we traced how this happened. You can see he even had the strength to close the door. There's blood on the door handle. He had his handprint on the wall and his other hand was holding the railing and he was able to go down the stairs and there's tools all over the stairs because, you know, Alex and my dad love clutter. <laughs> there's a bunch of mess all over the floor. <laughs> I was like, man, how could my dad walk down this stairs? He'll just trip all over everything. But he managed to maneuver through it. It was amazing. I don't know how he did it. 
And like Brother Frampton mentioned earlier, he still had the strength to grab that Israeli flag that that was held dear to him. And he's able to, he probably knew, you could tell he knew he was probably about to go to heaven. And he said, Lord, you know, before I leave this world, I want to let everybody see how much you mean to me. And he just wanted to grab that flag. And he put it here. I don't know where he put it, but it was near him. And that's the last thing he, imprint he left on this world. And, you know, I'll, I'll forget. I'll never forget that. You know, I just thank God that he died that way. I mean, and even the nurses and the doctors told my cousins that when they had to, when he took his final breaths, uh, when his heart, before it stopped beating, um, they said, like, he died peacefully with no struggle at all. It was like he was sleeping. And I thank God for that. That he didn't have to, they didn't have to give him any hard time. Um, usually, Usually when my mom calls me, she tells me, hey, can you edit this prayer letter for me? It's for my mom and dad. I always edit their prayer letters. That they send out to all their churches that support them. Never would I have imagined now I'm editing my own eulogy for my dad. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it, but... There's a purpose for everything. Look at that video. My dad, he died on, um, he died in the living room where my brother lives. And that's where the Israeli flag was. My dad um, had on his cell phone a message from my mom because he missed her birthday five days before that day. And he did it right exactly where he took his final resting place. That's where he sent the message to my mom. And I just wanted to share it to everybody here. Um, if the video is open. But we'll get to that later. Just let me know when it's ready. But I, I just want to let you guys know how God um, has moved so much. I'll tell you guys another story where God's amazing grace gave us comfort. We had our stopover in Vancouver, me and my family, all six of us, trying to uh, wait for our flight to get to Saskatoon. And we're just sitting there trying to buy some Carl's Jr. And all of a sudden, like, this guy is like, hey, Alvin. <laughs> I turned around and it was my brother, don't, don't out of all people. <laughs> he, he ended up having the same exact flight as, a, as me, and we didn't even talk about it. <laughs> out of all places, you know, God brought us together to comfort each other, and just give each other a hug and say, no way, God put us together on the same flight. And all of a sudden, there's nine little kids in this airplane. <laughs> and you can tell everybody in there is like, man, what's going on? There's so many kids. And even my mom had, um, even my mom had the same arrival time, like within the hour of when we got there. She was going to be there within the next 45 minutes, but we tried to get the same flight as her, but she was in a different airlines. But just the comfort of at least me and my brother getting there was just so comforting and you could tell God was there. And another amazing thing is the reason why we're in this building is when me and my brother and our families arrived in Saskatoon and the whole church was there to, to just give us hugs and comfort, there was another man there and I didn't know who he was. I just saw him talking to my brother. It turns out it's it's Pastor Fish, the one who's the pastor of this very church. He saw my brother and said, hey, 
what's going on? What's going on? And then my brother told him what happened. And the Lord spoke to his heart to say, hey, if you need anything, you can. And basically, he gave this church for us so we can have the memorial service here free of charge. And he just said, hey, you got two days, do whatever you want here, do your Filipino thing. I know <laughs> Pastor Fish even researched it and said, like, they eat a lot and during, <laughs> during the funeral services. And, uh, he was looking for the table where people gamble because he researched that. <laughs> but I said, we don't do that. That's just other people who aren't Christians, but I want to share some funny, funnier stories about my dad instead of just crying the whole time. Uh, I got so many memories that I wanted to, I couldn't even put them all down, but if you guys don't know, my dad is really strict when we grew up. Uh, and he had the pala. And um, I love the palo because we use that even for our kids too. They know what the palo means. It, it's it's the paddle. And um, every time we did something wrong, we always wanted my mom to palo us because she gives us the one that doesn't hurt. The paddle doesn't hurt. But when me and my brother know, yeah, there it is. And when we and my brother know, my dad is gonna palo us. <laughs> it's funny. We we go in our room and put on like three pairs of jeans. <laughs> So it'll be really thick, so, so when he paddles us, it's not going to hurt as much. Uh, before we went to the Philippines, we had to raise support to different churches all over the U.S. And he, he has to preach a message every Sunday, and my mom knows this. We basically memorized his whole, ser his whole sermon from start to finish because he has to preach the same message to every church we go to every week. So we heard that for like two years. But here's the funny thing, my mom, man, she, pre she had to say a testimony of her life, how she got saved every, every time we went to a different church. She would say the same exact message, but every time she would cry like crazy, like genuinely cry. It wasn't fake. So my mom was the, our salesperson. She's the one who helped convince the churches to support us because of her drama. Philippine drama, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of my mom, so my mom's birthday was August 11, and this is my dad greeting her on the phone because um, he wasn't there in the Philippines. And uh, this is the same place where he took his final breath. But I wanted to share this to you. You see what kind of man he is. Go ahead. Thank you. This is a special day. Pinabati ko ito ang mahal sa biyak na very happy birthday. I want to thank God of Israel for giving me a very supportive wife, a great show winner, educator, and dedicated to serve the living God, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, babe, sa mga pagsisigaw mo sa marami kong patukulang sa iyo. Hindi mo ako din divorce. Bakit kaya? Then, Dahil kay Jesus na nakapagos. To please Him and to serve Him. Yeah. I love you, babe. Babe. God bless you more. And more years to, to serve our Savior Jesus Christ. P.S. She said, Hello, happy birthday also. God bless you. That's my mom's twin that he greeted as well. My mom has a twin. 
So you see there the flag in the background, there's the couch. That's the, that's the flag he grabbed. That's the flag he grabbed and before he laid down on that couch. <laughs> Um, some other funnier stories. Everybody knew where his favorite store was. What was it? Ukai, Ukai, Ukai. That's the thrift store. He always, I remember, he'd always come up to me, hey, look, Alvin, a candle, 50 pesos long. And it was like these shorts that look like they're 30 years old. <laughs> and he said, look, it's so good, it's so nice. But that was my dad, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't have a good fashion taste. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like Alex. <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the way he dressed, hey. But Alex matched, he matches a lot better than my dad. You'll see on some of the pictures, he's wearing like a checkered shirt with like striped shorts. <laughs> So it, sometimes it's so funny, I always tell this story, you, none of, not everybody's heard it, but um, me and my mom were in court, in the courthouse, because uh, I had a car accident, so we had to deal with some law, legal issues. So me and my mom were in the front, and my dad was parking the car, and he was trying to park the car to find a spot. <laughs> and uh, he came in late, right? So the court session was going on, so he walked in, and you know my dad's fashion sense, right? He's dressed like uh, not not appropriately for a, a courthouse. So the judge he goes, "Hey, have your driver sit over there in the back." <laughs> uh, the court, the judge thought my dad was our driver. So you know that was just a funny story. Um, everybody knows my dad, how uh, Mr. Herbal Medicine guy. Over the years, he's gone through several different products that we all know. Like, remember the Ed Howell oil, everybody? If you get sick, go to my dad. He has a remedy for all of your sicknesses. <laughs> um, so the Ed Howell oil is like the miracle oil for any sickness. You know, if you get bit by a rat or a snake, you just rub, rub it on there. Um, he loved going to Dr. Tan. This Chinese doctor, he, he's like a herbal medicine guy. You just go to him, show him your tongue, he'll tell you everything what's wrong with you. And you just drink this nasty uh, tea and you'll get better. And it worked. But recently, he started advocating charcoal. Yeah, like literal black charcoal. You wipe all over your body, you'll get better. You drink it, you'll get better. So. He, yeah, uh, and see, like lemon, you squeeze it in your eyes, your eyes, your pink eye will get better. My, also, my dad also did not have the best manners when he ate. When he, if you eat with him, yeah, when you're talking to him, <laughs> or when he's eating, he'll always eat with his mouth open, <laughs> chew with his mouth open. So sometimes if you're sitting across him, you'll have some of his food on your table, on your plate. <laughs> Yeah, right, Curtis? Or when he's talking to you, he'll start spitting in your face while he's talking to you. Yeah. Another funny thing is when you're, uh, when you're having a conversation with him and you're near enough to him, you end up having to go to the hospital sometimes from a broken arm or a broken shoulder because every time he talks to you, he's like hitting you. Hey, yeah. You're... Yeah, you heard about the news? Hey. Hey, you're like, hey, hey, <laughs> did you see the news or like that? But um, those are just some of the funny stories I have, and uh, there's a lot more I just couldn't think of. It's hard to think of everything, but my dad's number one goal and mission here was to preach the gospel to everybody, wherever he went. And um, he's, I just remember him street preaching in the middle of downtown Jacksonville. <laughs> I was a kid back then, and he just started yelling, preaching the gospel, hey, you need to get saved. Uh, he used to preach at the rescue mission all the time, all where all the homeless were. 
He used to knock on doors like crazy. It didn't matter if it didn't matter if people slammed the door in his face. He goes, all right, let's find the next one. But if I asked my dad, what would you want me to say during a funeral? He'd probably just say, hey, share the good news. And that's what I want to do on his behalf. Share the good news. Each and every one here, ask yourself, when life is over, when you breathe your last breath, where will you spend eternity? Do you know for sure when life is over, do you know for sure 100% you're gonna wake up from your last breath and find yourself in heaven? Or you're not sure, it could be hell. Romans 3.10 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is good enough to get to heaven. It doesn't matter if you're a priest. It doesn't matter if you're a teacher. If you're the kindest person in the world. We all fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Because of that sin, we all deserve to die. Um, that's why in Romans 6.23 it says, For the wages of sin is death. The payment of your sin is death, and that death is in hell. We all deserve to go to hell because of the sin, the wrong that we've done. But the good news is, that verse didn't end there. The wages of sin is death, but it says in the end of that verse, Romans 6, 23, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a gift. When it's a gift, when you have a birthday or if it's Christmas, when someone gives you a gift, do they ever say, hey, before I give you your birthday gift, you gotta wash my car two times and then I'll give you the birthday gift. No, they give it to you and all you have to do is receive it. That's when it's free. If you have to wash the car, that's not a free gift. Likewise, if you wanna to go to heaven, Jesus didn't say, hey, you gotta pray the rosary a hundred times before you accept Jesus Christ. Hey, you gotta to go to this Baptist church for five years before you can accept me. He said, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gift is free. So if you're working for your salvation to get to heaven, that is not the reason God came here. He came to give a free gift. Why would Jesus have to die on the cross if we could get to heaven on ourselves? If we could get to heaven by being good, why did he die then? That's kind of like saying, Jesus, we didn't need you to die. I'm so good, I can go to heaven on my own. That's why it says in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It says not of works. For by grace are you saved through faith. All it takes is realizing that you can't save yourself. It takes realizing that it's not all about you. All it takes is realizing that it's a free gift. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter what church you go to. That's why when I was 12 years old, I realized that I had already been going to church my whole life. I had the whole world fooled that, oh, he's a Christian. I had the whole world fooled, yeah, he's a pastor's kid or he's a missionary kid. But you can't fool yourself and you can't fool God. It's not worth going to hell because of your pride. It's not worth going to hell because of pressure. It's not worth going to hell because you're ashamed. Maybe, what will my family think? Oh, what will my friends think? Oh, I'm embarrassed. I've been in a Baptist church my whole life. What will they think if I say I'm not saved? Listen, your family and your friends will not be able to save you if it's too late and you're already in hell. 
that's why I urge you guys check yourself make sure you know when life is over you know for sure you're going to heaven just like my dad I know he's in heaven oh. you could leave this building you could leave your job you could leave your family you could leave your basketball you could leave your extracurricular activities without Christ but I beg you and I urge you don't leave life without Christ. It will be the worst decision you could ever make. Please. My dad, would, this is the message my dad spread across the world. This is the message he wanted everybody to hear. This is the good news. Please. Don't wait till it's too late. And everyone else here who has had that special day where you, you did get saved and you know how you're saved. And I want to ask you guys, how will people remember you? How will people remember your life? What will they say about you? Who's going to attend your funeral? I had a pastor in California. He told a story where he attended a funeral service. And he was shocked. He ended up preaching in that funeral service. To you know how many people? He preached to one person in the funeral service. It was basically a casket and one person. And that person was the one who owned the funeral home. He preached to him because no one showed up to this guy's funeral. Because of the life he lived. So I want to ask you, who's going to attend your funeral? And why will they attend it? What will they say about you? What kind of life did you live? Live a life that has purpose, everybody. Live a life that has purpose. We're on this world for a reason. If you have loved ones, whoever your loved ones are, spend time with them. Hug them and say I love you to them. Because you never know. Life is too short. I wish I had I wish I had more time to spend with my dad but I had to take comfort in knowing that my, I spent time with my dad in June before he came to Canada I'm, I'm glad God worked that out but I want to ask you guys who are you going to take with you to heaven with you do you have friends? Do you have co-workers? Do you have family who we know maybe are not sure when life is over they're going to go to heaven? How long are you going to wait before you take a step and say, hey, I care about you. Do you know about Jesus? What if they end up not making it to heaven and they knew they were with you all the time and they say, hey, you knew the truth. How come you never told me? Hey. Why didn't you share what you know? <laughs> so I challenge everybody here. Please don't wait till it's too late. We're here for a purpose. We don't know how long we're going to live. We don't know when Jesus is going to come again to take his believers with him to heaven. Please don't leave life without Jesus. And guys, please. Do something with your life where it means something, where there's purpose. I want to read a poem that I made for my dad. <laughs> Man, this is hard. But I'll try to get through it. Dad, so many images come to my mind 
whenever I think of you or say your name. Without you in my life now, things will never be the same. Those days flew by so fast when I was just a child because my life was full of your love, care, guidance, and smile. But what happened to all those times when I used to play basketball, ping pong, and bowling with you? No matter the trials or problems I've faced, you were always there to pray for me, hug me, and turn my gray skies blue. Dad, I can't stop thinking about you, your commitment to serve others, your passion for souls, that contagious smile on your face. We will, bad, you, we will badly miss you here on earth, but it comforts us to know you're in a better place. Dad, you were the one I turned to for answers to life questions when things didn't make sense. Now I'm left to deal with life without a dad when new challenges arise and commence. Dad, if I could just turn back time, spend more time with you, call you, and just hear your voice, I would tell you, out of all the dads in this world I could choose from, you would still be my number one choice. Dad, please know I love you and miss you so much, and no one ever can take your place. Years may come and go, but all the fun-filled, unforgettable memories I have with you will never be erased. Dad, I know you're cheering on us, on us, to keep serving him and spreading the gospel from your new home up above. I want to thank you for your legacy, your faithfulness, your willingness to live a selfless life and spread God's love. I am comforted to know you've reached your graduation day and now are up in heaven and life up there is so much better. Dad, I can't wait to meet you up again in heaven one glorious day because it's never a goodbye. But see you later. Thank you.